Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Good news friends, it's time for some Saturday morning react tunes featuring Robotech. And today we'll be watching episode 28, Reconstruction Blues. As the title suggests, they've got a lot of rebuilding to do after the events of episode 27. We'll leave that there for now though, friends. But before we get started, if you could do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. You'll be alerted next time we go live with Robotech or any of our sci-fi fare. And of course, if there's anything that we do that you would like early or in its full length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description. Not a fan of Patreon? No problem. Stick with us here on YouTube memberships and you'll get everything about a day early plus any bonus episodes we come up with. But that, friends, is there and this, friends, is now as we get ready to watch Robotech Episode 28 Reconstruction Blues. Prepare to engage Maximum Warp Reaction and away we go! Fanfare! Should have been a, a heartier fanfare, but my throat is killing me for some reason. It has been the driest. I mean, every, I'm, a, a lot of people in North America are experiencing the heat dome, and uh, it has made where I live uh, essentially one big dust ball. To hell with it. The only cure for that is Robotech. Boy, what a battle in the last episode, friends, right? Dear God. Oh, I mean, it was an absolute banger of a battle. I keep thinking about Miria and Max back to back fighting in the skies. That was crazy fucking cool, man. I mean, that was just so neat. Other cool ass thing was Rick taking those shots with the forearms of his Veritech, all those rockets coming in, and then it blowing the arms off the Veritech. That was so cool, man. Only a handful of survivors remain scattered throughout the Earth. Oh my God. It is now two years after the cataclysmic war between the people of Earth and the Zentradi invasion. Did they say two years? Commander Rick Hunter's orders are now to routinely patrol these deserts in his Veritech fighter. He is to investigate anything out of the ordinary. Wow. Yep. Hmm. Absolutely incredible. Gee, that's how bad it is. Hmm. Like real flowers. Dandelions are. Seems like a hundred years. Wow. When I first dreamed of becoming a pilot, it happened in a field just like... Ah, oh, Roy. I chased after a real, honest-to-goodness hero flying in his own airplane. I didn't even notice the flowers I was trampling on. Oh, wow. It's funny. All I ever wanted to do oh, was good fly. Cut. Not destroy anything. Or transition. Good transition. All that remains are these scrap iron junkyards. And even the SDF-1 is nothing more than a useless pile of robotechnology. What? The place this reminder of war is, in a field of wildflowers, it's almost as if the Earth finally decided to forgive us for the part we played in her near destruction. Really good dialogue. If Exodor is right, boy, I hope he's not. We may have destroyed nearly all the reserve supplies of protoculture in the known universe. Dear God. And this is what remains. A pile of junk in a field of flowers. Robotech Masters. Patrol Squadron Alpha calling Commander Hunter. Commander Hunter, come in, please. Yeah, Commander Hunter. I can't seem to raise the commander. What do you make of it? He probably landed to check something out. There's nothing down there but sand and desolation. Now, what could he possibly be checking? I don't know he's the commander. We need new, we need new Veritech pilots with names and... Now, where do you think we ought to start to look for our lost lamb? I think his last transmission came from the Northwest Quadrant. The dialogue is much better, by the way. So far, the narration from Rick and the dialogue and the inner ship stuff is good. And where the SDF-1 now rests, a new city has risen. The battered hulk looms silently over peaceful homes, schools, libraries, and churches. Oh my God, so it never even moved? It, it's done? Scarcely two years before, there was only chaos. The valiant survivors have found the strength to rebuild. Wow. All under the protective eye of the once great ship. <sighs> it's sad. Build an overhead rapid transit system to the suburbs where many of the crew live with their families. Susu Studio. Oh dear, 
Why does his bedroom always look like someone's been sleeping in it? He's got a poster of Min May up, and it, is he living with Lisa? Looks like Rick's photo album. I wonder if he'd mind my looking at it. <laughs> of course he'd mind, but in this mess, he'd never know I even looked. It's nothing but feet pics. <laughs> the first page isn't all that thrilling, at least to me. No shit. What does he see in her? Not much besides great looks, a lovely voice, and a fabulous career. Uh, we'll leave a couple of those boxes unchecked. I wish someone could tell me why I keep wanting to strangle this girl. I can tell you. I'm, I'm in the same boat with you. Rick, how can any girl compete with this kind of glamour? I guess you can't help how you feel any- <laughs> This type of glamour, ah. And if this doesn't teach me to mind my own business, I don't imagine anything will. Are they living together? And he's got like a poster of Min May up? And a, a book full? <laughs> well, anyway, the day wasn't totally wasted. <laughs> I certainly improved the condition of Rick's bedroom. <laughs> Very strange. Well, what now, big brother? Ah. A stalwart watchdog watching a field of flowers. What would you do? Good writing. These giant aliens appear friendly, but how many times have we been victimized by our own friends? How? There's no more flying for fun. This time you'll be flying. For the safety of your home and for your loved ones. Hmm. Flying for my loved ones. Hmm, flying for my loved ones, huh? Who are your loved ones, Rick? So what happens to, like, the command crew and, like, Glovo and Claudia and everybody? Cool shot. The dandelion seeds getting really different. Really different so far. I like how I picked one of the flowers, too. You're listening to the voice of the beautiful Lynn Minmay, broadcasting live and direct from Granite City. Granite City? Oh, there's more than one encampment. Or not encampment, city. I assumed that it was just the stuff around SDF-1. And we don't consider the project hopeless at all. How do you people feel about Kyle's it? Kyle's there too. Oh, Jesus. Thank goodness Kyle survived. But let's try to forget for a moment what the military warmongers have brought us to. And everybody too, try to forget the fact that I'm apparently colorblind with this incredibly awful outfit color combination. It's a new song. I like how there are some bigs in Trotty that just couldn't get mic micronized. Commander Hunter, come in, please. What is it? Are you all right, Skipper? I've been trying to reach you for hours. Skipper, I like that. Have you discovered some trouble with Renegade Centrotti? Huh? No, but look what I found. Cool, cool. Cool flip shot. That area is not inside of the natural recovery planning zone. That's right, but nevertheless, there are flowers in the northwest quadrant. Planet's healing itself. When I get out of the ship, I'll take the radio with me. Out. Rick, I thought we were done with this stuff. He cannot quit this girl. He cannot do it. It's you I cannot so is Granite City built around like a fallen Zentradi battleship? Is that what I'm led to believe there? The Dear God. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no problem, bud. I don't need to have that stress test anymore. But it's her all right. My Min -Mei. Your Min -Mei? Does she, have you spoken in two years or? There's one woman who would trade every ace in the deck for one Rick Hunter. <gasps> oh, I don't like this. Oh no, there's Max and Miria with their new baby. Oh, they look so happy. I can just imagine how it. Oh. <sighs> there doesn't seem to be any way I can escape you, Min -Mei. I guess some women were dealt all the aces after all. Lisa, we need to stop this line of thought immediately. Let's get out of this, Berg. It's disgusting. Do you have to drink so much? Listen, don't change the subject. We didn't even get any money. This is our whole paycheck. Now, Kyle's, Kyle's an alcoholic. Have you given any thought to taking in a little cash for a change? No, I haven't. This was supposed to be a benefit for these poor people. Not a great opportunity for myself. Oh, come on, Min May. You know that I didn't mean anything like that. You meant exactly that. You said exactly that. The Earth was attacked and we did the only thing we could do. We fought back. Fought back. I'm getting sick and fed up with hearing about it. Anybody would think that you've fallen in love with the military. Oh, for God's sakes, Kyle. 
I just don't want to hear anyone knocking the soldiers is all. If it hadn't been for them, I wouldn't be alive right now. Or for that matter, neither would you. Rick, I'd tell you to run there and punch Kyle, but he's like a master at martial arts, so. <laughs> oh, the moonshine's done. Did that make you feel any better about yourself? Whatever you may think about the military, there are many fine men in it. And they are much better men huh? than you are right now. What's that crack supposed to mean? It, 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 it's pretty evident what she just said. You can feel sorry for yourself. Is that so? Well, I've done a pretty good job of taking care of your career, Miss Big Shot Singing Star. Don't you see my red shirt and mustard tie? I didn't realize I owed it all to you. I've been selfish. Wait a minute, Min May. I didn't mean that I wanted to split up. Oh. Maybe not. But it's what I meant. Beat it then. Who needs you? It's like the writers got together and they were like, how can we make Kyle even more insufferable? I need hands, everybody. Make him a drunk. You in the back. Promotion. It's an emergency. What happened? Centrani soldiers are attacking a city. <gasps> I'll come right away. So she must be like, just like reserve now. They cut a swath of destruction from Lake Oswego to the Columbia River. Crushing and smashing without mercy. Really descriptive. I mean, there's the senseless cruelty of the unprovoked assault until total chaos prevailed in the once beautiful city of the roses. Really good, really good writing. No sign of anything yet. Ah, good lord, this is horrible. Wow. Haven't we had enough, everybody? They're just gonna smash some kids. I mean, what the hell? What's the motivation here for the Zentradi? I wonder if this is Chiron. Like he just can't sit back. Let's hit him. We've got to lead them away from the city. You almost think that Chiron would have folded away though. Like he wouldn't have even stuck around for this. Great animation. These guys really want to fight. Yeah, they do. Where's Rick? This could be described as dereliction of duty, Commander. Hey, what the devil are you talking about anyway? Where were you? I went to see somebody, but what is- No, for God's sakes. Anyway, it becomes my business when you jeopardize the lives of the men in your squadron. Absolutely. What's your problem, Lisa? Oh. You, you did something wrong, Rick. Oh, that man! Take cover, take cover. Lieutenant Commander Hayes is on the rampage again. Now, come on, everybody. Hunter did to cause the blow up this time. Are they together and he's still pining over Min May? How in the fuck is that supposed to work? And washes his dishes when he's on patrol and he won't even take her places. Wow, amazing. Rick, what? I believe that Lisa would get herself roped into something like this. She's smarter than that. Exactly. Ixnay, we're being watched from the control module. Huh? Uh oh. I don't like how they're like analysts now instead of the, the bridge crew. There's like a bunch of them. Come on now. Shouldn't they have been promoted? Don't these characters ever give up? Listen, guys. He's doing. Commander Hunter. Where in the absolute fuck are you, Rick? I'll take over now, Bobby. Drop back and stay out of sight. Bobby's the younger looking one. Cease firing you people at once. Drop your weapons immediately. They're not listening, Rick. Time to light them up. For the last time, you are instructed to drop your weapon. Okay. Warnings are done. Are they still going for wounding shots and not kill shots? Yep. I give up now. Looks like the fight's gone out of them. I guess we can go back to headquarters now. Well, the one pod's chasing people, Rick, so maybe they're not completely done with killing. Once more into the breach, my friends. I wonder if there'll ever be an end to the fighting. Well, it seems like these, these little skirmishes are very sporadic. Look at that war cloud. Why do I feel like- Rick, what the- f Was that because she was so surrounded by fans that you couldn't get close to her? Well, no, I wouldn't say that exactly. Anything happen? So what could happen? I don't know, dude. Talk to her. Hey, wait a minute. Lisa, what is this? Just something to remember me by. Yep, she's saying F you, dude. Uh, 
Yep. Lisa, wait a minute. You better not keep the Admiral waiting. You effed it up, Rick. <laughs> you effed it up. Jeez. Unfortunately, what I feared has come to pass. The aliens among us are reverting to their former ways. What? Why are they reverting back? So much desolation and so much bitterness. I should sing about it. In the incredible aftermath of Universal Holocaust, many people walk alone, condemned by the nature of events beyond their control to protect... <laughs> they are the ones who, by their own choosing, are the defenders of common decency in the cosmic scheme of things. Common decency. One such man is Commander Rick Hunter. All right, friends, we just got done watching Robotech, episode 28, Reconstruction Blues. And the only thing left to do is to talk about it. All right, everybody, just got done watching Robotech for Saturday Morning React Tunes, episode 28, Reconstruction Blues. Okay, first off, this episode was probably one of the best constructed episodes that we've seen yet, if not the best. But I'm going to tell you what, they really put it well up with the narration, with the internal monologues. I thought the writing was top notch. We had some really good like description, like, like where specifically this attack was taking place in Portland, um, New Portland. Really, really cool stuff, like really, really kind of drilling down and showing an attention to detail that we seldom see in Robotech, to be very, very honest. Usually it's broad stroke stuff like they don't want to get too specific they don't want to kind of bog the audience down in details understandable they're shooting for a younger north american demographic but um this one did this one actually kind of it had to because we had a, that two-year time jump but it also had to it had a lot of heavy lifting to do as far as like you had to bring us up to speed with characters had to bring us up to speed with the world had to bring us up to speed with kind of like the politics between like the reformed zentradi the still outlaw zentradi which apparently we have and the human populace um micronian populace it's very very interesting to see you know, and I mean, they, they brushed a, a, across a lot of things like Miria and Max's kid, um, you know, we're, which was a cool thing. We don't need to go into any more detail with that. Just kind of mention it and walk off like they did. So you're like, well, hey, what the hell's going on? Um, it seems like there's been a massive reconstruction project over the past two years with Granite City being rebuilt, New Portland, um, where else? And then I, apparently whatever the uh, the city is around the SDF-1, that's not Granite City. Granite City was where Min May and the uh, ever dickheady Kyle were performing. Um, Okay, so, I mean, it's like they have nothing left to do with Kyle, and I was joking during the reaction by saying, you know, they're going to make him an alcoholic now. Well, I mean, I guess that's the logical next step for that pompous prick. But, um, you know, at least uh, now, with that being said, and I've said this before, in episode 27, Force of Arms, I thought that Min May's presence was chef's kiss. Perfect. It was exactly what we needed. You know, her kind of being the symbol, you know, the symbol of everything that the Zentradi wanted and that the kind of reform Zentradi and the Micronians were fighting for. It was really, really cool. I enjoyed it very much. Um, and I enjoyed Min May during all of that. I liked what was going on. I didn't like the constant, you know, um, Rick, I love you. I love you too. You know, I thought they had a clean break. They obviously did not. But I'm going to tell you what, the Min May in this episode, if this Min May continues, sky's the limit because the character in and of itself has been established. You know, we already have dynamics with everybody and we have dy Min May is probably with maybe the, that with Global maybe being the exception here, Min May is somebody that has a dynamic with literally everybody left alive. You know, um, if it's a Micronian, they've heard of her. You know, if it's a Zentradi, uh, a reformed Zentradi or uh, ally Zentradi, they have definitely heard of her. And even if it's like rogue Zentradi, they've probably heard of her. She's like literally the most famous person on the planet. I would assume, you know, I mean, I mean, Global's probably up there just because of his kind of like commander in chief of, you know, a military commander type of stuff. But um, Min May's got to be. She's got to be the most famous, the most popular. With that being said, I really, really like the kind of like the introspection that we got from Min May in this one. The kind of realization, it's, it's like we were, thank God, we were privy to the moment where Min May was like, Kyle is a super duper prick. And I was like, you know what? And he's like, well, that's not what I was saying. I'm going to drink and kick shit. And uh, she goes, well, you know what? It's not what you were saying, but it was what I'm saying, you know? 
peace, dickhead. I'm out. And uh, you know, he cries and drops to his knees. He is such a drama queen and such an asshole. I mean, uh, I whoever wrote Kyle, I mean, honest to God, a tip of the cap, you know, a pat on the back. Great job for making an insufferable character, a character that I have I have seldom run across his like. <laughs> Where he is such a dick that you're just like, you know what, man, there's there, no redeeming qualities. You know, he's a good fighter. <laughs> maybe, maybe I give that to him, but we're not even sure how great he is if you put him up against like Miria or Max or, you know, I mean, even Rick. I think Rick would get his ass kicked, but I think, I think Max and Miria might be able to, after that knife fight, might be able to hold their own against, uh, uh, you know, pouty Kyle. <laughs> just what a prick. Um, and I love how they dress him like a clown, too, which is so fitting. You know, nobody else has those types of, like, color coordination problems. So he almost looks like he should be just, like, hopping out of a car or something, you know, with 80 of his best friends. What a dick. Um, <laughs> Anywho. I could go off on Kyle. I Kyle is one of those types of characters that you just want to see all the bad things, you know, and it's and it's warranted because he's such a prick. But anywho, moving on. Um, I really enjoyed this episode in that, uh, you know, it was a really kind of explored the world, really kind of explored what was going on. We had that really great narration from Rick and the narrator at the top of the episode, you know, where Rick basically ends it by saying, and now here we are just a, you know, rusted hulks in a field of flowers. I mean, that was cool shit. It. That was really kind of poignant, you know, and I I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, and it's a it's a a decidedly different tone that we have right now, you know. And I I I often think of you know it, it's impossible not to to kind of put yourself in your place of your younger self, you know. When I'm younger and in the '80s, if I had watched this, what a what a like a really a, a dramatic change. You went from like the SDF one centric Robotech fighting in space to this kind of shattered Hulk of the you know. It's not even filled in color wise. It's like it's almost like dulled out, like grayed out, like it doesn't belong anymore it's just the background now for the sdf1 and you know you kind of switch to this planetary motif where you're flying in atmo you know you're not in space you're not doing these fights everything looks different you know the vertex look different because they're not in like the background of space they look more detailed obviously the animation's better um you know it, the animation is really strong in this one you know it was super duper duper strong in 27 but i mean i'm i didn't see anything that was like a glaring problem in this one so so uh, I was really, really happy by the story that they're telling here because it seems, I don't know, it seems like a simpler tale now. It seems like the, the, this is a tale that has kind of like had a lot of the extraneous stuff kind of stripped away from it. We're down to like the bare bones, like who are these characters at their core? Who are these characters? Uh, what's the world? What's happening in the world right now? At its core, what is the world doing right now? Rebuilding. Got it emphasis on rebuilding what's going on with the enemy uh, not much except you know we're starting to see pockets of people kind of re kind of i guess default back to their original state cool we get that little bit of information about the zentradi and like these rogue elements that are out there but you know we have a we have a problem in an antagonist or an enemy we have a problem in that the zentradi that are our allies are experiencing weird kind of flashbacks or, or, or symptoms of, you know, being a part of that culture. And we have uh, obviously our inner character problem. I mean, I don't like the idea at all, 100% completely against the idea of Lisa going into Rick's place and like cleaning up his shit. You know, it seems incredibly desperate for somebody like Lisa. Lisa, in my mind, she's always been my favorite character. Lisa, in my mind, yes, as she had like uh, conscience problems or, or like conflicts of, you know, self-worth and stuff like that. Absolutely. She's had that the entire series, you know, and a lot of it's warranted, you know, a lot of it's kind of like, you know, in memory of this, you know, in memory of Carl or, you know, and then that weird time when she was, you know, kind of pining over Kyle and now she's pining over Rick or leaving Rick. You know, I would love to see Lisa kind of stand on her own, but I know they're kind of gearing towards this relationship with Rick. My only problem is, is that now they have gone so far with this Rick and Minmay shit that it's, if he ends up with Lisa, it's like he's settling for Lisa. And that's, and there's no way that Lisa wouldn't feel that way, you know? Okay. So for the four years I've known you, Rick, uh, uh, three years and 364 days, you've, uh, been pining over Minmay, but now you want to be with me. Okay. You know, there's, 
And I don't like that for Lisa. I don't like it for Rick, to be very honest, you know? And um, I, I don't know. I, if he ends up with Min May at this point, it might be more fitting. And I don't like Lisa to be alone, but if Lisa's better alone, then that's perfect because I don't want her, you know, I, I don't want her as the the cook and the uh, the maid for Rick. I mean, dear God, she's a hero, everybody. Anywho, all right, friends. Well, enough of that as we get ready to see exactly what I'm, I'm very curious is to see how they're going to wrap up this leg because I know we have a couple more episodes before we have the definitive break that you all have told me about where we kind of leave Macross behind and go to the next you know, a uh, vehicle that was kind of cannibalized to make Robotech. Um, I, I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to how they kind of spin these. Cause I think we've got like 10 episodes left, something like that, you know, eight, eight to 10 episodes. It's going to be cool, friends. If you could do me a favor, though, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. You'll be alerted next time we go live with Robotech or any of our Saturday morning react tunes or any of our sci-fi fair. And of course, if you want anything that we do early or in its full length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description, my friends. But all that is then and this is now. And now it's time to say goodbye from Robotech. But, you know, we've always had kind of places on the SDF1 we've said goodbye from. And so where should we say goodbye? from now i think it's only fitting that we the audience the greek chorus that's been watching robotech say goodbye from where the earth is healing itself that patch of dandelions that rick found let's stand and look at it and let's hope and wonder what the future holds until we meet again friends vulcan roll and i'll see you